In this video, we are going to discuss about release management in the cloud version of Service Desk Plus. What is release management? IT release management is about managing, planning, testing, collaborating, and deploying controlled software or IT releases through a systematic approach. Here is an overview on how a release management in Service Desk Plus looks like. All new releases are created through a change ticket. The created release goes through different stages and is completed. Let's take a look in Service Desk Plus how a new release is created. When a change record is created, the change record goes through different stages. As a part of the new release, we have introduced user acceptance testing and release as new stages for the change request. From the release stage, we can create a new release or associate an existing release to the change record. The created release takes data from the submission stage of the change and also has all other stages just like a change record. Once all the stages of a release are completed, the release is successfully completed. In this video, we are going to look into the components that are required to set up an effective release and deployment process for your organization using Service Test Plus. The components that are required to set up an effective release and deployment process are templates, workflows, stage and status, roles, and downtime types. Let's look into each of these configurations and understand how they are configured. Release template. You can create new templates for release management. Each template will have its own name, a defined workflow, and a set of fields. Apart from the default fields, you can create new fields as per the business requirement and group all the fields using the section. Also, each template can have its own roles where different users can control and manage the release process. You can also group these roles using section. In each release template, there is a workflow that defines the path on how the release has to progress. So let's take a look at how workflows are configured. Workflows are available for change management and release management. Let's take a look at how a release workflow looks like. Based on the number of stages created, the release workflow can progress through each of the stages. So, the stages have to be created in order to construct an effective workflow. Before we look into the stage and status, let's understand what are the components that's available when constructing a workflow. This workflow looks pretty similar to a change workflow. You can define new stages and assign the workflow path. You can add conditions, switch notifications for each workflow, approvals, and field updates. The workflow can be rearranged as however required, and you can have approvals on each and every stage. The effective components that is required for workflow are stage and status and roles. Let's take a look at how stage and status are configured. We have dedicated stage and status for release management. For release management, you can create as much as stages required and for each stage, you can have as much as status and actions available. These stage and statuses are used in change workflow defining how the change has to travel from one stage to the other. Each status has its own notification process, has its own notification template and content. The notification for each stage and status is sent to a release role. Let's take a look at what those roles are and how they are constructed. Release roles. Release roles are created either for all users or only for technicians. You can allow access for all the stages and actions, or you could pick and choose for what stage what action should be delivered. This role can be compared to a RACI matrix, and you can determine who needs to be part of a specific operation. You can choose the responsible, accountable, consulted, or informed operations using the roles. These release roles are used in stage and status of a release. Those stage and statuses are used in the workflow of a release and the 
workflow is mapped to a release template. Now, finally, we are going to see how the downtime types work. Downtime types are a new feature that is introduced as a part of release. You can define the name and you can say for what specific operation this downtime is all about. This downtime type is used while working on a release. With all these configurations discussed, let's take a look at how a change record is created and how a release is created through a change record. Here is a change record that is created by Silker to do performance testing on their Singapore data center. And also, at crisis situation, they wanted to offload the backup to their New York data center. So the change record is created, the planning of the record is proposed, it's been approved, and once it's approved, the stage goes to release. Since the change management stages are fixed, you can define workflow in such a way that you could skip stages on a change record. With release, you can either create or associate a release from a change record. Since there is a release already associated, I can just navigate right into the release from the change record. When you're creating a new release from a change record, the data from the submission stage of the change request is carried over to the release submission stage. Now that we have discussed about templates, workflows, stage and status, and roles that is required to construct a release management, this is how a completed release record looks like. Using the template, all the fields are populated and the workflow that is required for this release has been associated. The workflow defines how the release has to navigate from one stage to the other. Also, it defines the path of completion, it defines the path of progression, and or if there are any pending stages, it has been denoted with a red line. At the submission stage of a release, we capture data that is required to start this particular release process. And as defined, Silker is planning to upgrade their data center so that it not only handles performance issues, but also at disaster, it offloads its backup to the New York data center. So the planning for the same has been done. All implementation, rollout, backout plans are documented. Then under the development, they are proposing the model on what needs to be configured in order for this particular activity to be rolled out. At the testing phase, they figure out there is an issue. So they roll back to the development stage to course correct and perform testing accordingly. So using workflow, if there is a failure or if there is a flaw at one particular stage, you can configure a route back to the development stage. So this is handled using the workflow. As defined from testing, I can route back to development and upon completion, I can go back to testing again and then proceed further. Once the testing is done, Zilker opens up to user acceptance testing, performing the testing in staged manner. Based on the business, Zilker opens up their user acceptance testing for different set of users to ensure the load balancing, the performance, and if there are any issues that's going to be detected, they are going to perform activities accordingly. Once user acceptance testing is done, it moves to deployment, and this is where the entire progress on how the deployment to be carried out is listed. The downtimes that's denoted are carried forwarded to the deployment stage, and the downtimes are reflected. If the release is about software enhancement or development, you can have training for the users. Our specific release is about a major data center upgrade. So we are skipping the training and we are moving to the review. All deviations that happen from the planning till the completion are documented in the review. The proposed architecture has been enhanced and it's now scalable for performance and load testing. Once the review is completed, you can close this particular release. To ensure data is captured at every stage of a release, we have closure rules for release. Under setup, we have closure rules for release management. You can have mandatory fields for submission, planning, development, testing, UAT, deployment, training, review, and closure. For each of the stages, you can have different mandatory fields to ensure accurate data is captured before proceeding to the next stage. 
Once the closure rules are satisfied, the release is successfully closed.